Today we're going to be talking about congruent triangles and we're kind of setting up everything that we need for future for the future of this chapter for everything else that we have going on in this chapter. So congruent triangles. Do figures are congruent? There is a correspondence between the angles and sides such that the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are congruent. Okay, and there's a special way that we write these two angle these two triangles are congruent because I have all the sides are congruent. Each side is congruent to a respective side in the other triangle and we have our angles congruent. So our congruent triangles. So you name one triangle. I'm going to start with E D, F. So I went from angle one, the one that's marked with one, to the one that's marked with two, to the one that's marked with three. The cool thing is that when I name this other triangle, I have to start with that same corresponding angle, meaning angle E corresponds to angle S because it's marked with one arc. And then I went E and then I went to D. So D, I have to go to angle R. And then lastly, T. So that right away, I can tell E is congruent to S. Yes, it is. I can tell D, angle D, is congruent to angle R. I can tell angle F is congruent to angle T. There's also something that's, so our congruent angles, we just kind of, I listed them out for you. Angle E is congruent to angle S. Angle D is congruent to angle R. And angle F is congruent to angle T. Now I can also list my congruent sides kind of a similar way. Let's see if it'll let me get away with just erasing those. Oh, it did. Okay. So I can right away say that ED is congruent to SR. And I wish you guys were kind of in my brain and seeing what I'm seeing. I'm just looking at the congruent statement. I'm not even looking at the picture. I'm gonna kind of prove to you guys that that is true for the picture. DF congruent to SR. And then lastly, EF, so the two N1s, EF, is congruent to ST. So now let me look at my diagram and see if these congruent statements are correct. ER, oh, why do I have an ER on there? It should say ED. Well, my first congruent statement wasn't right. ED, yes, that side is congruent to SR. Hey, that one's right. Next, I go to DF. DF is congruent to SR. How did I mess this up? Oh, because I can't write. Oh, I was so I was so happy that I thought I was doing this right. DF is congruent to RT. DF congruent to RT. Hey, that one's right, now that I rewrote it correctly. And then the last one, EF, marked with two, is congruent to ST. Hey, that one, my third, my third chance, I finally got one that's correct. So again, listing, the point of this was listing, when you're listing your congruent triangles, your vertices, make sure that the corresponding angles are listed in the same spot when you're listing out your um, angles, your letters. Okay, this is important. Corresponding parts, we're gonna be using this in proofs a lot. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC, okay? So the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC, okay, so I started with my third degree, angle P, then I went to the two, and then I went to the one. So I can tell right away, 
Angle A is congruent to P. B is congruent to Q. C is congruent to R. Let's see if I can do better listing out my congruent segments. AB is congruent to PQ. PQ, AB. Okay, I did that first one right. BC is congruent to QR. BC congruent to QR. And then lastly, AC is congruent to PR. AC congruent to PR. Hi, I did this a little bit better the second time. I think I was probably distracted by something. I don't know what I was distracted by, but I was definitely distracted. Okay, so corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, example one. Um, so I have this where I have D, E, F, G is congruent to K, L, M, N. And find the value of X, find the value of Y. Okay, so I'm going to look at this. I think it's easier to find Y first. Angle L. Angle L is my second variable that's listed. Or my second letter, I should say, that's listed. So that's congruent to angle E. Angle E is 111. So I'm actually doing part B first. Um, I subtract six from both sides. I don't know why I had to use my calculator on that. I know why, because I wrote it down wrong in my notes. Y is equal to 21. Now part A. So I have side MN. So I have side MN. That's going to be congruent to side FG. So 5x plus 2 is equal to side FG. That's this one here. 12. So 5x is equal to, if I subtract 2 over, I get a 10. x is equal to a 5. I'm sorry. I'm distracted because I have something wrong in my notes, and I'm distracted by it. x equals 2. In the diagram, ITP is congruent to NGO. Find the values of x and y. Okay, very similar to what we just did. Okay. Um, I'm looking at this diagram, and I'm noticing right away ng has two variables in there. I'm going to look and see if I can solve for one of those variables, if there is something relating another one of those variables somewhere else. I have angle O. Angle O is listed as the third angle, so that has to be congruent to angle P. And that only has one variable in it, so it's easier if I solve for Y. 6y minus 14 is equal to 40. I add um, 14 to both sides. I divide, and I get y to be equal to 6. Now side ng. So side ng is congruent to side IT. So X plus 2Y, I meant to write a minus there, is equal to, so NG is equal to IT, 7.5. Now the reason we found Y first is I can now plug this in. So then I find that x is equal to, man, I'm not doing well today. I have all this stuff wrong in my notes. Apparently when I was doing these, I said 12, 2 times 6 is 18. It is not. Okay, I'm glad I'm finding all my mistakes. Okay, third angle's theorem. Okay, if two angles of one triangle 
are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are congruent. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I have angle A congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to E, they all have to add up to 180 degrees, so therefore C has to be congruent to F. Angle C has to be congruent to angle F. Okay, solve for x. So I have one of them that's marked. So I have angle z is marked with one arc. So that equals angle u, which equals 54. I have angle v, which is equal to angle y, which is equal to 67. So I have to find the third angle in that triangle. So I do 180 minus 54 minus 67, and I get angle W is equal to 59. And that's equal to angle X. Angle W I just found was 59. This is 4X minus 5. I add 5 over to both sides, I get a 64 is equal to a 4x, x is equal to a 16. Okay, decide whether the triangles are congruent to justify your answer. Okay, well what's nice is the first thing is all the sides are congruent. I, should, I shouldn't say all the sides are congruent. Um, corresponding angles, corresponding sides, I know I just said angles, are congruent. Okay, so I have my sides congruent. Each of these angles here, so angle E, F, D is congruent to angle H, F, G. Um, because the vertical angle is congruent. Angle D is congruent to angle F, I'm sorry, H. Angle D is congruent to angle H because that was given to me. And then by the third angle theorem, Angle E is congruent to angle G, so yes, the triangles are congruent. Okay, that is all I have for you on congruent triangles. Thank you for watching my video.